Lord God, open our hearts to your word that we heard. Open our minds to your Holy Spirit to minister to us. And also, Lord God, um, grant to me your words that you've given me to share today, that they may be anointed, that they may impart to us what you have in mind for each of us today. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <laughs> oh, late night formatting, eh? It looked better on the other screen. There we go. Well, that is what it is. Uh, there really is no place like it. Nurture, love, discipline. All three of those things I should hope in the right amounts. Tussles with siblings. Favourite meals, and spaghetti bolognese with heaps of cheese on top, anyone? Maybe a generous shake of chilli flakes as well. There's least favourite vegetables, uh, chocos. I grew up up north and they grew in our backyard and I hated the things. Uh, Brussels sprouts, I mean, I love them now, especially when you pan fry them with a bit of... Anyway, I won't go to get all gourmet here this morning. Uh, hopefully home was a safe place and it's where you learned to be you. It's where you were free to be you. Maybe sometimes it's where you even hated being you. But it was where you were while you figured out what it is to grow up, well, at least a little bit, where you became ready to be released into the world as an independent individual. That place? Home. It's more than just where you grew up. It's where you belong. God's chosen people in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel, found themselves evicted from their homes. And not just that, but evicted from their very homeland itself. Uh, that's the context of today's Bible reading from Jeremiah. God's people homed into the promised land were now horribly homeless. This was a terrible eventuality that the Lord himself had promised to them they would never face. Unless, that is, they broke the terms of his covenant with them. Well, I'll give you one guess as to what they did. The people of Israel and her leaders departed from God and cheated on him, their rightful true love. Like a bloodhound getting a taste for blood and becoming unstoppable, Israel just couldn't resist worshipping other gods, those of the Canaanite people who had occupied the land prior to them. Their religion was demonic. They sacrificed children. But Canaanite worship also involves sex, a lot of sex. Uh, if, uh, sorry for the kids in the room. If as a Canaanite you wanted to be um, successful with a harvest and a good growing season, you went to the local Canaanite temple to have sex with an official religious prostitute. Now, again, I'll give you one guess as to which option won Israel's heart. The Lord or sex under the guise of religion? Well, is it any wonder that the Lord time and time again described Israel's lack of allegiance to him as spiritual adultery? I mean, it was more than just a metaphor. Israel's apostasy, their turning away from faith, and their idolatry, their worship of other gods, involved in a very real sense in turning to false gods worship through sex. So when God brokenheartedly calls his people Israel, his wandering-hearted people, adulterers, he's describing reality. He's not vindictively calling them nasty names. Because don't get me wrong, something that God has created to be beautiful and wholesome 
and worthy 100% of celebrating in its intended context of marriage had been satanically distorted to become a means of idolatry, of worship of other gods instead. You can lead a horse to water, but, well, you know how it goes. You can't make it drink. God sent prophets to warn Israel, and one of the last of whom was Jeremiah, but they refused to turn from worshipping false gods. So the thing God promised wouldn't happen to them if they kept the terms of his covenant with them happened to them because they didn't keep the terms of his covenant with them. And so the Babylonian army came and took this whole little rebellious nation off into exile. I remember having a, a living relationship with Jesus from a young age and I used to um, really uh, enjoy reading the Bible as a kid, uh, especially the Good News translation which had those little line drawings of Bible illustrations. Like, it just amazed me that with a single, maybe three lines, just three unbroken lines, you can illustrate a scene or draw people like that. And, and as I read about Israel and the, this cheating-hearted, wandering-hearted people of God, I used to shake my head at Israel's stubbornness to obey God. I just couldn't understand how they didn't get it. They'd seen with their own eyes all the miracles of God as he delivered them from Egypt supernaturally and planted them into their own promised land, gave them the terms of a contract with them through which they would be blessed and remain in that land. If but they followed the terms of that covenant. I just didn't get it. And then, then one day it actually dawned on me. I came to a realisation that I would in no way fare any better. I realised that on my own, I am completely lost. Because my heart wanders from God, I who end up in exile. My actions evict me from my home. We all are lost like sheep without a shepherd. We need the good shepherd to lead us safely back to the place that we know is our true home and to lead us one day to our eternal home. I want to tell you about my grandfather, uh, Grandad Hanola. Arne was his name, but in Australia most people just called him Arnie. Uh, Arne grew up in a region of Finland called Karelia. He fought in the war against Russia in which Finland defied all odds and maintained her dignity and her sovereignty, but in doing so also lost a portion of her land to Russia when the border was moved westward in the fallout of Finland staying her ground. One of the major areas affected was Karelia, which was split in two, I Finnish Karyala. Uh, my grandfather's childhood home was, in that moment, at least for him, confiscated in a foreign land. My grandfather died when I was still quite young. I was probably 10 or 11, I think. But my grandmother used to often tell me how homesick he had been for the many decades that followed, uh, desperate to visit his childhood farmhouse just one more time. He never did make that visit. There simply is no place like home. We all long to go home. It's where our hearts beat at ease. Israel was stuck in exile for 70 years. Now, this was a dark hour for God's people. Yet in the midst of this, our God, our gracious, living, loving and kind God speaks hope. 
He speaks comfort to his exiled people through Jeremiah in the words of today's Bible reading. In fact, shall we read them together? I hope the font's big enough to follow. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. My people. Personal. And he still loves them. In the middle of this dark, heavy night of exile, there still is hope because even there where God had every right to smite his people into oblivion, he instead promises their deliverance. There will come a day when they will return home. And yet the scripture at the same time promises more. It also foreshadows the arrival of God's son in the flesh, destined to die as the sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. One final sacrifice to end all other ritual animal sacrifice that used to be held in God's temple. Friends, what, what has sent you into exile? For Israel, it was their sin. Well, for, for me, for all of us, at least according to Scripture, it is our sin that drives us into the kind of exile I'm talking about here. Israel's heart that is beating with cheating is a heart that you and I in many ways share in common when we consider our allegiance to God. Reflecting on the first of the Ten Commandments, which says you shall have no other gods, the reformer Martin Luther 500 years ago wrote in what we now have as the large catechism these words, and shall we read these together as well? He says what idolatry or the worship of other gods is. Idolatry does not consist merely of erecting an image and praying to it, but it is primarily a matter of the heart. Anything on which your heart relies and depends is really your God. It is the trust and faith of the heart alone that makes both God and an idol. If your faith and trust are right, then your God is the true one. I mean, think about it. What wife, what husband willfully chooses to forget their partner's flagrant and blatant infidelity just like that? Only a holy God, our maker and defender, would lavish this kind of outlandish love on the undeserving, unfaithful partner who was covenanted to him. And he does. He does this for me. He does this for you. He did it for Israel. He continues to do that. Whenever we are seduced away from him by a near infinite number of other distractions, he still loves us back home. But that is the point. And it is also the gospel, the good news. And it's this, God loves you and chooses you in his son, Jesus Christ, who willingly went to the cross and willingly had all of your sin heaped upon him in what was to his spirit every bit the agony that the cross was to his body, broken and beaten, bruised and bloodied in the greatest act of love ever shown.
Well, how does this story end? Well, after my grandfather died, my grandmother made one more trip back to Finland. Now, this time she was able to cross over the Russian border into the other half of Karelia and go to my grandfather's childhood home in his absence. But the sight that greeted her was a mess. She was absolutely shocked by the ruin that it had become. Only the foundations remained. She was glad, in hindsight, that my grandfather never did go back, for she was certain that this second heartbreak would have been for him worse than the first. And as for Israel, well, Israel enjoyed her return to the promised land after 70 years of hard exile. Many lessons learned. And in Christ, you and I have already crossed into the heavenly realm promised through Christ's resurrection. One day he's coming back for us, and when he does, what is now only a partial reality will in that instant become an eternal reality realised in full at home with him, in his home, the one he is right this moment preparing for us to put our faith in him as Lord and Saviour. There really is no place like home. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, lead us ever onward, faithful in obedience to you, joyful that you've justified us by your blood and there's no effort required on our part to get saved. You've done it all. We bless your holy name this Resurrection Sunday, dear Lord Jesus, our Saviour. It's because of you that we say with joy, peace, hope and love, Happy Easter. Thank you, Lord. Amen.